periods don't stop for pandemics. That has been the rallying cry of many of my fellow advocates and researchers and other colleagues working in the menstruation space globally. But just to talk about what that means here in New York, I recently walked into a, a local drugstore at, and found that the aisle where the menstrual products are had a sign indicating you shouldn't take more than two. Um, products, whether it's uh, tampons or pads or whatever it is that you use. And it really struck me uh, in thinking about how hoarding may have been a real issue, and it may be an issue in other parts of the city, even though, you know, the aisle that I saw was fully stocked. It also brought to mind an email that I received from one of my master's students indicating her sort of deep disturbance at discovering that the tampons in her local store had jumped in price in a matter of weeks obviously probably linked to shortages. And so why is this so concerning? Um, we already knew that people experiencing homelessness in New York struggled to access monthly supplies of menstrual products. We had suspicions that those who were low income, we didn't have good data, but we certainly were concerned that those who were low income were already struggling to access products when they needed them. Um, and then you have to think about all the people who now are finding themselves unemployed, unprecedented numbers, who probably never had to stop and think before, you know, do I have money to pay for tampons or pads the way I used to? Why does this concern me so much? Periods don't stop. You can't make the blood flow stop no matter what's going on in the world. And fundamentally, I think they go on that short list of essential items that everyone should be thinking about um, when your whole world turns upside down. They're just as important as toilet paper, which got a lot of attention in the news, um, and milk and eggs and whatever else is on that short list. Um, because for a person who gets their period, um, the ability to feel dignity and manage your chores around the house, to take care of a family, to go out and work if you're a frontline or essential worker, um, to go for a walk, to support your mental health, whatever it is, uh, you need products uh, to do that. They're really deeply fundamental um, to one's ability to be active and, and engage in the world and to have a good sense of sort of your own self and well-being. And so, some silver linings in the current situation, the fact that menstrual products were sort of included in the recent stimulus package, um, listed as a medical product, sort of to indicate how very essential they are. And also just the fact that a colleague raised for me a few weeks ago, 10 years ago, we wouldn't even have been talking about periods this openly and calling for attention to the need for food banks, uh, to make sure they're well stocked, to make sure that there isn't price gouging, that there isn't hoarding, so that everybody has what they need. So these are wonderful aspects of how the world of periods, uh, as we might call it, is changing, um, but they don't fundamentally solve the entire challenge which lies ahead of us, which is ensuring as many people remain unemployed in the months and possibly years ahead, um, and need access to something so fundamental that is still laden with shame and taboo for many, um, that we speak openly about it um, and we make sure supplies are adequate, that there isn't price gouging and that our shelves are full um, at an affordable price uh, so that everybody who gets their period can manage with dignity and comfort.